الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا شوفوا جمال هذه الآية لو جمعناها مع قوله سبحانه وتعالى إن الله على كل شيء قدير الله سبحانه وتعالى سد إن سورة الكهف وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا an آية that means the same thing as إن الله على كل شيء قدير الله سبحانه وتعالى able and capable of doing anything and if you take that word down and break it and say what is the meaning of shay in Arabic, anything. There isn't anything in this universe but a thing. So any problem you have is a thing. Any need you have is a thing. Any thought you have is a thing. All of these things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala able to do it. So he diversified in many different ways in the Quran telling you how powerful he is and how capable he is subhanahu wa ta'ala this is to connect you with him he wants you subhanahu wa ta'ala to know that he is enough for you as simple as that alaysa allahu bikafin abda wa yukhawifunaka bil ladhina min dunih people are scaring you Addressing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and us, people are scaring you with other people, normal people, just like you. Allah subhanahu wa taala is not enough and sufficient to protect you as a servant. Abdu, you are abid, I am abid, he is abid. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, abid, servant of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is sufficient and enough for you. If you have this understanding in your mind about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you would start to understand the context of the hadith and the ayat that refers to things your brain is incapable of comprehending. I'll give you <coughs> an example. Like for instance, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, reported, قال, طعام الواحد يكفي الاثنين وطعام الاثنين يكفي الأربع وطعام الأربع يكفي الثماني وخذ اسحب تم أول ثماني ستاش وستاش اثنين وثلاثين يعني the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the food of one enough for two and the food of four, two enough for four and the food of four enough for eight he stopped he could have said and the food of eight equals sixteen and sixteen thirty two and thirty two sixty four and after six to four I don't know how to count <laughs> So you, you go from there, subhanAllah. So you come and you have a hamburger, or you have a sandwich, or you got whatever, you know, and it's like um, all of a sudden your friend showed up. What am I going to do with it? Or you have some little dish at home and your friend came and you want to invite. It's like, this is enough for me. Now I have another person. Logically, it's not enough. Similar to money, you put money in the bank, they give you extra, you put the hundred, you come and you see it, a hundred five. You have a hundred in your pocket, you give sadaqah five dollars, you have ninety-five, it's not a hundred five. That one ninety-five, a hundred five, and this one ninety-five, and we say that zakah increases the money, and uh, the bank uh, depletes the money. But to our vision and to our mind, it's not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it will, it is. Now, are you a believer to take this one and, for, and uh, ignore that one? It's up to you. The same thing here. Do you believe that if you share that food with him, it's going to be enough for you and him? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. If you go back to inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, the problem is solved. He, you know, he is able to do anything. Who suffices your hunger? How do you know that you need to stop after the sandwich? You're going to tell me your stomach told you it's enough. And who created your stomach? And who said it and who programmed it to say enough for this and I need more? 
It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So life is so simple. If you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know his names and attributes, we keep talking about that because it's everything, then you have no problem in life. Then whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it works. It works. You just need to know and act. Khalas, divide it into two. Case closed. Eat with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make that little sandwich enough for you and him. And you go into say alhamdulillah. After you eat one bite, another bite, another bite, and you feel like, hmm, you want his? Give it a minute or two, and after that, you go, Alhamdulillah, I'm full. Let's go eat something, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, found you something, or your wife made something, and he said, come here, eat some more. He said, no, 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 Alhamdulillah, I'm satisfied. No, no, you did not eat much. Yeah, yeah, but I don't feel like eating. Who made that happen? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the whole idea is, eat together. If you fear the food is not enough, eat together. Who worries about that so much? Our wives. When you invite someone, it's like how many people are coming? They worry so much about the number. So, how many people? Ten. Type the food of ten, you're cooking for ten. The Prophet ﷺ said it's enough for twenty. If you know who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's enough for 20, not for 10. So if you come up and you show up and you said, oh, I, I called my friend. Oh, I, I did not tell me you're going to call another people. Now she's so panicking because she's going to add more food. And she forgot that the Prophet wasallam said, basically double what you have is what the food is going to suffice. You made it for two, it's enough for four. You made it for eight, you know. We will have no problem in anything we think. The only problem we have is we don't act about the command. Eat and share and eat together. You have a plate, enough for me. If I give him a little bit of it, a little bit of it, a little bit of it, you're going to have this much, this much, this much. Psychologically, it's not going to be enough. Don't divide it. Eat together. Give him a spoon, a spoon, a spoon, and put the plate and say Bismillah, follow the etiquettes of the uh, food, Bismillah, eat with your right, and don't eat from the center. That's the catch. That's where the Prophet ﷺ said that blessing descends in the center of the meal. Yani eat from around, eat from what's near you, leave the middle so the blessings keep coming. We all know the hadith. And we call it miracles to the Prophet Sallallahu when he has a small sheep and 300 people and 400 people and more and the food still there. Who made it sufficient? You have a bucket of water that sufficed the whole army. Who sufficed that? Who made that? You have a glass of milk or, or yeah, a glass of milk that the Prophet Sallallahu passed on all the Sahaba and the companion Abu Hurair radiallahu anh, was dying to have a drink. It's like, khalas, rahat alayhi. He's going, he passed it. What, is, what am I going to get? And it keeps, subhanAllah, drink, drink, drink. And Abu Huraira drink a little bit. He wants more. Prophet Sallallahu said, drink more, drink more, drink more. Until he said, O Prophet of Allah, I have no room for it. One glass. All of these incidents, miracles for the Prophet Sallallahu but it's also for you if you follow the command of the Prophet وسلم, how to eat and how to talk and how to be to believe and how to have faith in the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apply the text and cancel your brain when it comes to things that your brain doesn't understand. Leave it and say in Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir wa kan Allah ala kulli shay'in muqtadira. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله